So this here is a Bell South visual director, which is basically a fancy color ID display. And what's unique about this is that it's compatible with Color ID Deluxe, uh, which is basically, uh, I think the technical term for that is Type 2 Color ID with uh, Disposition or something like that, which basically allows you to choose how to handle an incoming call waiting. Typically, you can either flash and uh, switch to the other party, or you can hang up and uh, take the incoming call. So those are not new. The three additional options are send to voicemail, play a hold message for the caller, so basically let him know that you'll be with him shortly, or you can add the caller to an existing call, so basically automatically uh, set up a three-way conference. And with regular call waiting, these are, are things that you can't really do. And the way that it works is it uses uh, analog Display Services Interface, or ADSI, which is just FSK, so similar to the way that Call RAD itself works. And uh, if you have compatible equipment, then you can use those options. Of course, you also have to have a line that supports those options in the first place. But most phones, um, no surprise, don't actually have uh, ADSI buttons. Uh, ADSI phones are are not very common at all um, and pretty hard to find, although there's some U.S. West phones. If you look around on eBay, maybe you can find one. Uh, but something that's much more practical is to get one of these units, which comes with those buttons, and you can use those for those and possibly other options as well. So anyways, that's the unit. The way it works is it requires... Uh, requires power, looks like 300 milliamps at uh, 9 volts DC power. It's got an adjustable volume setting here, so low, medium, and high. And then you plug the phone line in here, and then you plug the telephone you want in here as well. So that way you can save on, you don't need a splitter or another jack for it. And then there's a reset pin. Flipping it around, you've also got the option to put batteries in. The batteries are not strictly required to operate the unit, but um, it's recommended uh, if you don't want to lose all your settings every time you disconnect power. So, and here we can see that this is the uh, model CI-7112. And it's probably not coming in very well, but the ringer equivalence number or REN is 0.2B. So it's a type 2 device and 0.2 REN, so not bad at all. And other things to note, um, for callback, you can do it using 7, 10, or 11 digits. So rather than just blindly redialing a caller ID, to say they all come in as 10 digits, this is helpful because... You can call it back depending on it's a, if it's a local call or a long distance call or whatever. Basically, just depending on what the dialing requirements are in your area for for the for outgoing calls. So that's kind of neat. I don't know if it supports prefixing yet. Like if you have to dial a line to get out uh, for an outside line, um, if you can automatically prefix that. Probably not, honestly, because you might run into other issues as well where it's sort of hard to tell just based on the call ID. But generally speaking, that is a very nice feature. And then it's got these voicemail controls as well. And it sort of looks like, if you just looked at this, you might think that this is like, it's got a built-in answering machine or something. And that's not the way it works. The way it works is that if you have voicemail on this phone line, these buttons will basically be able to interact uh, with the voicemail system, and so you don't have to remember the codes for delete a message or whatever. You can just use these buttons, so that's kind of nice as well. So it sort of feels more like the answering machine. It's got the familiarity and convenience of an answering machine, but it actually works with the voicemail that's on the line in the CO or on the switch, basically. So that's pretty nice. 
and then this here I would assume is just a regular message waiting light. So overall this is a pretty uh, tricked out display, a uh, pretty tricked out unit with lots of features and probably one of the best ones you can get. So fortunately you can still find these around. I'm not sure if they're being made new given that it says Bell South. I don't know if there's new Bell South branded products being made. Uh, but if you can get one of these, it's definitely a, a very nice unit. Now, I haven't used it at all yet. In fact, I haven't even plugged it in. This is new out of the box. I've just wired it up, but I haven't plugged it in yet. So that's what I'm about to try now. Now, before we go ahead and plug it in, first, I want to take a look at this manual that came with the unit. So, like I said, it was basically new old stock, um, I guess I would call it. And you can see by the copyright that this particular unit, um, or I guess the whole idea here, uh, the product itself is, is more than two decades old, but it's not like, you know, new features have come out with Color ID or something. So, um, this is still a very useful product. And you can see just by the, the little display on there, uh, if this will focus better, um, that uh, that's sort of what it looks like. It has the ability to support up to two names and tell you which call it is. It's got the number and the time, and the, the time and date, of course, uh, comes from the switch. And it even says here, the clock automatically sets itself on the first incoming call. Don't attempt to set the, don't attempt to set the time in a different manner. So um, that's just the way that the time typically works with caller ID is uh, you get the time from the switch, so you don't need to set it yourself. Oh, and I forgot to mention this before, but it's also got this pop-up tab here so you can make it stand up. It's a little bit easier to read. So, um, But there is lots of interesting information in here. Um, so made by U.S. Electronics. I don't even know if they're they're still in business or not, but um, that's what this is about. So uh, definitely a quality product. Uh, welcome to the family of Bell South Color ID users. I'm definitely excited. So obviously this unit was made before VoIP and everything, so it just basically assumes that the only way you could use this is getting caller ID service from your local telephone company. Um, the more important thing to note is that uh, for call waiting to lux and voicemail, you need those services. Voicemail is, is pretty standard, but I don't think call waiting to lux as a feature has really proliferated outside of local exchange service. Um, it's sort of one of those niche features that not a lot of people know about really. Um, or even if they have it on their line, maybe they haven't used it. But that's what this is, basically. The display shows you the, in the incoming caller information, and then you can manipulate calls by selecting different features that are available on your line. So, as I mentioned, this just allows you to call it back with the appropriate uh, number of digits. And then these are just some of the other features that it's got. So here's a table of contents of what's in here. And a lot of this is, is pretty standard stuff. But uh, yeah, so here's sort of a diagram of, of what this is. And this does confirm that the red indicator light here is a message waiting light or a line in use light, I guess, at the same time. Um, but some interesting things about this. So this tells you some of the different things that you might see on the Color ID display. And something interesting is long distance call indicator. Um, apparently it will tell you if an incoming call is long distance. So I would guess that that's part of the Color ID specification. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how that works. That and one other thing. Uh, which I think is covered later in this manual. But this just goes over the different options. And again, it's recommended that you install the two batteries to prevent loss of memory. Um, 
I'm probably not going to do that because uh, it's, it's probably not worth the inconvenience and hassle of batteries just for if the, the unit does lose power every now and then. I'm, it's, it's mostly good for the options in Color ID. I'm probably not going to go ahead and heavily customize it to a great extent. But anyways, this just shows you how to wire it up. Adjust the contrast. Um, I think this is the Spanish part of the manual or something like that. You can do on-hook dialing or off-hook dialing. So it's pretty cool. Of course, um, in addition to using that, you could actually just pick up the phone and, and do star 6-9 if that's supported. But if you're on a line where that isn't supported, like I think in, in some Bell South 5Es, it'll only let you do star 6-9 if it's in your either in your local calling area or actually on the same actual switch. So in that case, you know, something like that might might be handy. That shows you what new calls look like and just instructions on how these features actually work and so forth. You know, you can drop it, you can do all this and it shows you shows you which call is active at the moment and which one is on hold. Flash at caller. Yeah, so long distance calls. So that's how you know that it's a long distance call. So um, the unit doesn't say if, if this is just, I guess, how this is a determining it. I would assume it's actually part of the caller ID. The other thing is it'll tell you if it's a forwarded call. And not only that, but it will also tell you if it was forwarded because the original number called was busy. So uh, I guess that is all part of caller ID information if it's long distance, if it's forwarded, and if it's forwarded because it was busy. Private calls, that's sort of standard. Um, this is just how this particular unit decides to show that a call is private. And out of area, which probably, um, this isn't super common to see anymore really since basically all switches are electronic and everything now, but if you get a call through the operator or uh, possibly feature group D. Well, actually, I think feature group D caller ID will still come through. But I think operator assisted calls and some of their calls might lead to that. And then error, that's if no caller ID is sent basically at all or there's some kind of error with that. Deleting new message. Battery low. So it'll tell you if it's a repeat call or not. And then these are the other services that the unit apparently supports. Um, these are just the standard vertical service codes for some of these features like call return or automatic call back, repeat dialing or, or busy redial, continuous redial, whatever you want to call it. And some of these other features as well. Uh, blockers, uh, anonymous call rejection. And ring control is setting the number of rings uh, before a call forwards for call forward don't answer, basically. So to use those, it looks like you just select the services button here and then press the, the feature you want using these toggle buttons. The other thing is obviously not all voicemail systems are the same, so you can actually set this unit up to choose depending on uh, what the menu structure of your voicemail system is. Uh, which which uh, mode to go in. So I'm gonna need to figure that out here uh, because I don't, I took a look at this and I'm not actually sure that it's, that my voicemail system is, is either of these. It might be something in between sort of, but I'll, I'll play with that as well. And it's nice that it lets you choose one of those uh, available modes or you can even set it up using a custom mode. So, you can select your voicemail pin, and that way you don't have to dial it. It'll do that all for you. And just more information about voicemail and troubleshooting. So, that's basically what's in this manual. There's a help line. Sort of doubt that still works. But anyways, uh, that is basically what's in the manual. So, as I said earlier, I have not gone ahead and plug this unit in yet, but I'll go ahead and do that now.
and there we go. So of course it has the low battery indicator on because I don't have batteries in the unit. And it thinks it's 12 o'clock just because it reset. But as soon as it gets an incoming call, then that time will be updated. So that's hooked up to this phone here. So let me go ahead and call that from another extension here. I'll just use this phone here just because it's here. Go off hook. And there we go. So I'll go ahead and answer. Hello, hello. And I can see that I'm here. Let me just set this down. It'll continue displaying the name for the duration of the call. So, um, yeah, I mean, it just, it just shows you that. It shows you the name and it shows you the number. Notice that there is a, a blank um, row at the top that isn't being used, it looks like. So I guess if I got a call waiting, um, you'd see that there. And then the time is correct. Let me check the clock. Yep, the time is correct. 12.14 p.m. currently. And it's April 8th. And this is the first call. So that's what, what that all means. So let me hang up here. And it shows that the line is still in use because of called subscriber held. Uh, that line is not going to release, so let me hang up here. But um, now it shows one new calls. And I guess that's going to keep blinking until... Um, Okay, so that this just goes through all of your missed calls. And uh, let's see, so that's... I guess this is sort of like the, the resting home screen. It just shows you how many calls total are stored in here. And you can come through and page through them anytime you want. So I go ahead and call it again. And just redial the call. Of course, you have to wait for the first ring for caller ID, and I'll answer. And if I go ahead and give myself a call waiting here, I'm going to try to do that on the same phone. Oh, and it's busy. Um, I thought I had... Actually, I don't have call waiting on this line. Let me... Uh... Let me turn that on. Oh, it's still holding my line. What's going on here? Okay, so I'm not sure if this unit is holding my line or because I've hung up here, so. Yeah, I'm getting dial tone. Let me try going off hook now. Okay, so now I've got dial tone. So to enable call waiting, I believe it's uh, star 371, I want to say. Yeah, so I either disabled it or enabled it. But um, star 70 is disable call waiting per call. So star 370 would be for uh, disabling it permanently, and so star 371 would, would turn it on, and I guess I just never had call waiting on this line, so I just enabled it. So now if I go ahead and give us a call back, gotta wait for the first ring, let me pick up. 
Okay, so it shows the information for the current column. Let me flash, get a recall dial tone, and uh, give myself a call waiting here. And, oh, well, that would explain a lot. So, okay, so let me actually just cancel that because that's not gonna work. So uh, I don't have, uh, I don't have, um, uh, Not sure why that happened. Um, I don't have call waiting type two set up yet, so um, that's just the way the system is right now. I still need to work on that. Totally forgot about that. Um, but if you had call waiting, and the way it will tell is that you'll hear FSK for call waiting type two, and the caller ID unit will basically filter that out or at least use that for the information. Um, so I guess I can't demonstrate that right now. The other thing I can't demonstrate right now is call waiting deluxe. I don't have that uh, set up yet. But once that is set up, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try. So once again, it looks like it just shows you that there's new calls. And it's interesting that it doesn't seem to recognize that I answered the call. Um, and it seems like if I just called it and, and hung up, then it would also display one new call. So and it looks like that's happening regardless of whether or not we answer it. But if I, let's see, if I go ahead and I just go to the missed call, which has one new call, two total calls, and I can go ahead and see that. Um, it shows both instances, this is 1218, and this is 12.14, so this is call 1, and if you go up, then it will go to a newer call. So, um, number 1 is the newest call, so that's that's how that works there. And then you can go back through all of your old calls at any time. And that time, let's see, that starts with the newer one. So, now if I wanted to redial uh, this number... And this phone is on hook. So if I just press uh, 7, let's try that. Hello? That didn't work quite right. Okay, so that is how you hang up, apparently, is you press the on off button. Um, not sure what happened there. I'm having some issues with this just because of the way that this line is set up right now. Um, but it looks like uh, that's what happens when you press a button and it's on hook, is it will automatically activate speakerphone for you. And so you can basically use this as a speakerphone, it looks like. In fact, it has a speaker button here. So if I was on a call, or if I just took the phone off hook, and I'll press the speakerphone button. Hmm. Well, it says speaker. Doesn't seem to activate, but maybe that's because this phone is off hook and that's too large a load for this unit. So let me hang this up. Yep, okay. So, that actually might be intentional. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. But if you hang this phone up and you have the speakerphone on here, then you can use this on speakerphone. And as you heard, it's quite loud when you do that. Um, so, let me turn the speakerphone off. Okay, that will take it. turn it off. And now if I hang up, it will release the line. Otherwise, it will just toggle between speakerphone and not on speakerphone. Similar to if you actually had a phone that had a speakerphone button, it's the same way. Um, same mode of operation. So, trying it out another way. If I took the phone off, okay, and then I press this button. Let's try the, the 10 button this time. The extensions are only four digits anyway, so 
in this case any of these would really work since there's only four digits anyway. But if I go ahead and I go to this missed call, I guess I did 11 digits. So now it's ringing. And as I said in a previous video, the ringer on here is not working right now. Okay, so I'll answer. Hello, hello. Okay, goodbye. Now it'll hang up. And it doesn't show it's hung up because this phone is currently holding this line. So it'll time out after 10 seconds. And there it's hung out. And now in 10 seconds, I'll get dial tone again. Should have gotten dial tone. Um, let me hang out. And I'll go off hook. And if I press the 7 button, you heard a nice loud click from this unit when it was done doing that. This is the unit actually putting the tones out on the line, but you don't hear them on your phone. So I guess it uh, mutes the receiver when it's doing that. So I'll answer, pick up, hello. So that's that. And I'll hang up now. So the line should clear. Right now it's backlit with some LEDs, so it's if this was dark right here, um, you would still be able to see that. And this is actually very good contrast. I'm surprised. A lot of these displays are not super easy to read all the time, especially if there's not a lot of light um and i have i have a good amount of light in here at the moment but um this is pretty easy to read whether you're sort of right on top of it or if you're sort of over here you can make out what it's saying pretty easily so um the display on here is pretty good so if we try to use some of these voicemail functions it looks like this is just for the speaker. And then these are the voicemail buttons here, basically. I guess the play is also a voicemail button. Um, the other thing is the services button, which I haven't really uh, played around with yet. But it's got call return automatically programmed in. And that little symbol there is actually not an error. Um, it's the same symbol that appears in the manual for uh, for those services. I don't think they'll be able to find the page quickly. But I have that symbol and then a number. So that's just a star or a 1-1 if you're pulse dialing or using a rotary phone. So obviously this can do tone, so we'll just do the star. So it's got call return. Um, how do you go through these? I guess you just press services again, maybe? Yep, that's what you do. So you press services until you find a service you want. Honestly, I'm not sure if this is as useful a feature because uh, you could just pick up and do star six nine. I guess if you had a rotary phone hooked up to this, this might be a little bit faster, but um, not a huge time saver. The other thing though is it does tell you what the code is. So that is kind of nice. And if you don't remember what the codes are, then this is definitely handy. And these are probably some of the more common features. Repeat dialing. That's one of my favorite features, actually. I love repeat dialing. Uh, cancel call waiting if uh, you didn't want that or you were using a modem. Ring control, probably not something you would be changing very often, but I guess that's handy. It's That's probably not a very well-known vertical service code, so I guess it's nice to have it in there. Anonymous call rejection. I don't know why they call it blocker. That makes it sound like selective call rejection. This is anonymous call rejection. So that's turning it on and off. And then it just cycles through the beginning. Again, so if I uh, pick up here and I do call return, I guess how would I do call return? Because if I do this, that will just cycle through again. Um, do I just do play or... Nope, that's not it. Um, I don't know what I did here. Uh, so times like these, it's very nice to be able to 
read the friendly manual. But additional services, I think that's where we would find it. This is page 31. So it's got these these services stored in here, and it calls them Bell South services. I guess class was starting to catch on in the late 90s, but these are standard codes in pretty much every area. Every RBOC uses those codes, and um, they're pretty well standardized, even among other ILUX and CLUX. Selecting a service, press the services button, and then press callback 10 to activate the particular service. So it's interesting that they choose callback 10 specifically as opposed to, I don't know, say callback 7 or callback 11. So let me do services and callback 10. Actually, I don't want to do call return. No, I do want to do call return. Let's try that. It's not very loud, but it's, it's telling what the last incoming call's number was. Yep, now it's getting a little bit louder. So that's what that is. And um, if, uh, let's see here, we can also go off hook and we can try, if I do, let's see, we try services and we do seven. So this also works. It actually looks like you can use any of the, you can use either the 7, the 10, or the 11 button. It doesn't matter which callback button you use, just have to use one of those, and that will work for those services. So that's a pretty handy feature, actually, I guess. Okay, so this is an hour later, and as we can see, uh, this is uh, the unit with the back backlight still on. So basically, it seems like these four green LEDs uh, that you can see there are sort of lit all the time. Uh, and I'm, I don't think that this has any kind of, like, a photoresist or anything to see if the room is bright or anything. But again, this is plugged into the wall, and that power source is required, uh, for operation. So, that's not an issue in terms of battery life, but maybe something to consider if you're trying to place this somewhere where it's uh, not introducing uh, that it's not very bright but I guess something to consider and then of course we have the message waiting indicator so to test that I'm going to go ahead and leave myself a message and probably difficult to hear but if I pick up the phone so it's a solid dial tone so there's currently no messages what I've done for this demo is I've uh, configured it so that it has access to one mailbox on this line. So it should, uh, it should, uh, uh, it will, it will give stutter dial tone for message waiting indicator when I pick up the phone, but, uh, it should also send FSK to this unit, uh, letting it know that there's a message. So I'm going to go ahead and try that now. Okay, so this is just a message for testing, and I don't really have anything to say, and I didn't really think about what I was going to say. So I think I'm just going to stop talking now and uh, hang up on you. Bye. Okay, so we don't see anything yet, uh, but it's it's possible that it might might take a minute for that to to happen. Now the stutter dial tone will take effect right away, so if I go off hook now, then I get stutter dial tone, and that light just indicates that the line is in use. But so far, uh, no M MWI yet. I was playing around with this earlier and it doesn't seem to come on. I think it's an issue with 
uh, this particular ATA actually. There's something weird with it. But I do have a way to manually send uh, a message waiting indicator. And just to show that there is indeed a message waiting if I pick up the phone. So there are messages waiting because I have stutter dial tone for that. But I can manually send uh, MWI, so let me do that now. Now if we look at this, it says message. So try to get my voicemail. I didn't even listen to any of them, I just deleted them all. I think they were all me anyway, so... And is it gonna clear automatically? It doesn't look like it. Um, so, this is something I still have to figure the kinks out with. But I can also, for testing purposes, uh, disable that. So, let me go ahead and get rid of MWI now. And now it says no message. So that's what you would see if you had messages, maybe you retrieved them from another phone or something, and now the messages are gone. So uh, that's how that works. So two more things to try. Um, if you get a private call, obviously it's not gonna show you the name and number since it doesn't get that. So, go ahead and try to do that. I'll do star six, seven, and then the extension. And you can see that it said private caller, and now it just says private number, because that's all it knows, so it's, I don't know why it's alternating between private caller and private number. Uh, the number is private, that's all there is to it, but uh, I guess it does support the ability to selectively make one of them private without making the other thing private, which I think I read somewhere that you can actually do that in Canada, where you can, for example, block the number but not the name. Um, but for all practical purposes in the States, uh, you would just see them in conjunction, so... That's what that looks like. Um, I'll hang up. The other thing to maybe see is is what happens. Um, again, it's just showing the new call even though I answered it, which is kind of annoying because basically I have to come through here and manually go through them, and that'll basically reset it so that it's. Uh, not blinking like that and how do we get back to the time i guess we just do end and then it will automatically uh go back there after a while the other thing is um if you answer before the first ring Okay, so it just says the time, it doesn't say error or anything like that. It never got the color ID because you picked up before it was sent. So, that's your loss. Uh, don't answer before the first ring if you want your color ID. Uh, simple as that. So, I did mention earlier that you have the ability to choose which voicemail system you're using. So, if you look at the manual, by default, it's using the Octal system, which is outlined here. And then there is also the BTI system, which is programmed in here. And uh, my system is not either of these as far as I know, because play is one, yes, that's consistent, uh, but erase is seven, which is consistent with octal, but going back is six, not one as shown in the booklet. Um, or sorry, not going back. Going to the next message is six, and it looks like here that's 
three uh, for moving forward. Um, I don't really remember the other options offhand because I basically just either delete or go to the next message. I don't really use the other options too much. But you can uh, program all of them. So all of these options, you have the ability to set the actual code. And you can actually uh, set up the system. Uh, it's, it's completely flexible in terms of how it works. So that's the good news about this is that some of these make a lot of assumptions and this really doesn't. Um, it makes some assumptions, but I think the assumptions it does make are reasonable ones. And it gives you the flexibility you really need to make this work on your phone line, which is which is the good thing. I really do like that. Um, so this is basically how you uh, set up uh, the voicemail. It says uh, that you press the dial voicemail for about six seconds, and then the unit will display an option. So let me do that. Right now it just displays that if you do that. There we go. So we can see that there is a drop down between Octel and BTI. If we go down, we're at BTI. And I guess we're, we're still in BTI. Somehow I got into BTI mode, which I didn't want to do. Now it's just making me choose the characters. Uh, to use. So press review, up or review down, and after you have selected it, then you can key in the access number. So, um, I guess it doesn't specifically say how to choose a custom voicemail system. But I guess let's try that again. And I'm, how do we get rid of this? Delete, maybe? Uh, services, there we go. Let's get out of here. Um, Still seems to be in BTI mode. I'm not sure how I get out of there now. Let me go off hook and let me hang up. Okay, so that that clears it. If you ever get into a weird mode, just pick up the phone and hang up. That's probably the easiest way to do that. Let's try that again. So right now it's it's not set up with a voicemail code, so that's why it doesn't work. But to set it up properly, um, it says Octal. Okay, so Octal press up, BTI press down, and escape to delete, or press delete to escape. So I guess um, at this point you would just need to put in the code, which it's waiting for the first digit. So to put in the first digit, let's see here. Looks like the pipe character stands for star. So that's why they use that character. I guess this is a uh, underline. This is a seven segment display. So it can't actually display an asterisk character. So that's why it uses that character. So now we can choose the actual digit. P uh, is pause and oval is a pound. And that is a star. So that's correct. Then you get the numeric digits. I'm just going to do star 98. I could do 1198, but since it's actually going to dial this using DTMF, shorter is better. So plus press flash to enter the digit and move the next space. I think it means to say move to the next space. So there we go. And if I go down to nine, flash, eight. And uh, press flash twice to stop it from flashing. Editing is confirmed. 
So there we go. So you can also key in your access code. I don't have an access code set up because um, these are my private telephones, so I, I don't have any reason for requiring that. So I just have it set to go directly in. But you could program that in if you wanted to, which would be good if uh, it was some sort of publicly or semi-publicly accessible telephone. Yeah, so if I go off hook, I do dial voicemail. There, so that works. So if I press play, that works. Oh, okay, so I guess it's not what I, I thought it was, but let me, let me go to the next, uh, let me go to the next message. Okay, so that's, that's something else, let me go next. And I was using a forward button. Coincidentally, that happened to work as the next button here. It looks like forward was programmed to three, which, uh, yeah, I guess, I don't know, none of these seem to be a six. I'll have to figure this out more. But uh, the basics here do seem to work, so. Okay, so it looks like um, it's actually fairly straightforward to modify the function buttons. You just do them one at a time. So, for example, if we go and we press and hold the skip button, first when you hold down it will show you by default uh, what what it's configured for. So skip, I think, uh, a zero, not a zero, in a lowercase o is a a star or not a star I think it's a pound but if we go through we can set the skip code and the skip code is uh, let me look at this reference here the skip code is six oh yeah I knew that I don't know why I needed to do that so I'll press flash to confirm that and it's only a one digit code so that's all there is to that um I guess I can do the same for repeat now, or not repeat. Yeah, repeat. I guess it's replay on the display. It's repeat down here. So, repeat is five, not three. So let me go to that. Double flash. That will confirm that. Uh, the next one is erase, which is currently one. Not a good option, in my opinion, because that could be used to play the message. So the erase or delete is 7. So let's go to that. 7, double flash. There we go. Uh, going back is 4. Which it already is, so I don't need to change that, actually. And... Next message, not forwarding the message, next message is uh, 6 as well. Um, I guess uh, it's the same as the skip code. I don't think there is a separate skip. Um, oh, and what do you know? That's already set to 6. So that's why it worked for me before, uh, just the way it's supposed to. So... Um, yeah, four goes to the previous message, six goes to the next message, and as far as I know, there isn't, uh, really a skip code. Um, but six will effectively exit playback and go to the next message, so it functions as a skip. I guess I'll just have them do the same thing, and I can confirm that because I'm not changing that. So that's forward, and then finally the save button, which is 2 by default, I want to change that to 9. D 
double flash. And that's how you set up the voicemail buttons. There's other functions as well, like help and all that, but um, those are not on here. So I don't, I don't know if the play button, oh, the play button is also configurable. I don't need to change that though, because it is only just one. So I'll get out of there. So yeah, now the voicemail is configured. So if I were to just pick up, and dial voicemail. Play the first message. Let's go to the next message. Actually, no, let's go back to the previous message. Actually, no, I want to skip this message. And you know what, let's start over with that message, repeat it. Yeah, so that's all good. Um, let's uh, go to the next message. That was the last message. So that's working perfectly now. So it took me longer to figure that out than it should have, but it's actually very straightforward. Um, this button, press and hold to set the code. Um, and this is assuming you don't have a pin, of course, but you'll need to set that up as well if you have that. Um, but use that to set the code, so star 98 or whatever toll-free number or whatever. And then just do the same for all these buttons. It's super easy to set up the programmable voicemail buttons. And now once you have that done, you can basically use it just like an answering machine. So if I just came up to this and did uh, this. You have two, oh. And there he goes, just like an answering machine. Not just like an answering machine, it's a little bit fancier than an answering machine, but the interface is just like an answering machine that you have these control buttons. And so this is actually convenient if uh, you want that familiar interface to be able to just go back and forth using dedicated buttons. So very, very easy to set up, and uh, I think I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here for this video, and that's all I can really demonstrate now. But uh, overall, this is a very nice unit, and I'm very impressed with its capabilities. And in a future video, um, I'm going to demonstrate uh, call waiting because I wasn't able to do that today, and not because... Um, that's just because of the new system and uh, the way that that's set up. It, it doesn't send FSK on the call waiting yet, so I need to work on that. And uh, call waiting deluxe, looking forward to doing that because I've never used call waiting deluxe before, so that'll be fun to mess with as well. Now that I've got this guy, I finally can, so uh, stay tuned for that.